Hi, this is Wayne Zell, host of Blueprint for Wealth and founder and managing member of Zell Law in Reston, Virginia. Today's video blog is an excerpt from my new book, Your Multi-Million Dollar Exit, The Entrepreneur's Business Succession Planner, due out in early 2023. So I hope you enjoy this excerpt and stay tuned for the book. What is a GRAT? What is a GRAT? It's a grantor retained annuity trust. It's a kind of a trust that is irrevocable. And in this type of a scenario, the grantor, the parent, the person who creates the trust gives assets that hopefully are appreciating in value to a trust known as a grantor retained annuity trust. And for gift tax purposes, the initial gift is based on a calculation of the present value of an annuity stream payable by the trust back to the grantor over the life of the grantor. Now, any growth in excess of a stated IRS rate known as the 75-20 rate will inure to the benefit of the beneficiaries of the GRAT, or it might be another trust that you set up for the benefit of your kids, grandkids, or other heirs. The hurdle rate, the 75-20 rate, was as low as 1.2% in August of 2021 and 1% in September of 2021. Since then, the rate has skyrocketed and is now at 4.6% in January of 2023, which means that in order to leave something to your heirs, the assets have to appreciate at an annual rate higher than 4.6%, which is the hurdle rate that's established when you create the GRAT. If the amount of the annuity that's payable by the trust back to the grantor is not equal to the fair market value of the assets being transferred into the trust using this 75-20 rate, then there will be some level of gift tax owed to the IRS, or you can use your lifetime exemption, which in 2023 has risen to $12.92 million per person over their lifetime. And it will continue to rise based on the rate of inflation. However, at the end of 2025, the lifetime exemptions of every individual will be cut in half under a sunset of the laws that were enacted back during President Trump's administration. So if there is a gift tax owed, it will have to be paid to the IRS. On the other hand, if the annuity is equal to or greater than the fair market value uh, than the uh, remainder interest, and there is no remainder interest based on today's rates, then there is no gift, and it's called a zeroed out GRAT. So the GRAT must pay an annuity back to the grantor, and it doesn't have to be in cash. It could be in kind. It could be in an asset that is already inside the GRAT. It could be shares of stock or shares of a closely held company. If the cash flow is insufficient, then you would make this in-kind transfer back to the grantor. But your goal is not to transfer appreciating assets into the GRAT and then back out to the grantor because that sort of defeats one of the benefits of using a GRAT. The next step in the GRAT is at the end of the GRAT term, whether it's two years or 10 years or somewhere in between, the remaining assets are transferred to the children or the heirs or whoever the beneficiaries of the GRAT or are, or could be transferred into a dynasty trust for the benefit of kids, grandkids, great-grandchildren, and so on. And it can be structured so that it avoids the generation skipping transfer tax, which is a 40% tax on top of the estate tax. So many of our clients consider using a GRAT that distributes the assets at the end of the term to a dynasty trust.